This is the fourth section of the chapter one on vectors. And here we're going to be looking at straight lines. Now, you'll know from um, your core one um, that you could write the equation of a straight line uh, like this, r equals a plus lambda b or any scalar b where a was uh, a point that it passes through so any point the line passes through and b was any parallel vector to the line and you know that if you put in different values of lambda, different scalars, you generate different coordinates. Um, you also know that in Cartesian form, um, if we wrote the vector A as A1, A2, A3, and the vector B as B1, B2, B3, then in Cartesian form, we'd have the equation of the line as x minus a1 over uh, b1 equals y, not x again, y minus a2 over b2, not b squared, equals z minus a3 over b3. So all of that was from core one. So obviously now we've got a new way of writing uh, the equation of uh, a straight line and that's using the cross product. So uh, we can write the equation of a line. Now there are two forms we could write it in. We can write it as r minus a equals or cross b sorry equals zero it's a zero vector or r cross b equals a cross b okay so this is the new way that we can write the um, equation of a line in three dimensions using the um, cross product. Now the A and B are exactly the same A and B as before. So A, let's try highlighting it rather than writing over it. A is the same A that's here. It's any point that the line passes through. Okay, so the A that we have here, the A that we have here is the same. And it's the same with the B. The B that we have here is the same B here, any parallel vector. Yeah, so we pick those points out in the same way and then we can insert them into this new equation of a line. Now I'm going to look a little bit more closely at this vector B, the direction vector. Now I'm not going to use the same uh, notation as they do in the book because I think that's slightly confusing. We're going to stick with the direction vector B, they call it A, and then instead of B1, B2, B3, they use X, Y, and Z. So I'm just going to put this here so it helps you match it up in the book. In the book, they do this. They use this as the direction vector, but I'm going to stick with what we have for the direction vector. Um, I think it's confusing because they're using the vector A as a direction vector direct, and also A represents the point that it passed through. So I'm going to stick with B. So our direction vector B, which is this B1, B2, B3. Okay, so this gives us the direction. If we wrote uh, B1, if we wrote it like this, yeah, as a ratio, so they use uh, X, Y, and Z. Uh, uh, this is what we call 
the direction ratio okay so this is called the direction ratio so we just take those three numbers in the direction and we can write it as uh, a ratio uh, as a, a ratio and we also have something called the direction cosines now the direction cosines direction cosines that's basically um, the cosines for each part of the uh, the direction vector so if I start with we're gonna have three of them one for each number in the uh, ratio so b1 they use x over the length of my direction ratio so that would or direction vector okay so that's one direction cosine here's another direction cosine b2 over the length of its direction and then the third direction cosine is this so basically what you can see is we take each number um, in the ratio and we divide it by the length so basically what we do is we take the x part of the direction ratio here and divide it by the length of the direction ratio here we take the y part of the direction not the ratio that we take the y part of the direction vector sorry my direction vector divided by its length we get the second uh, direction cosine and here we take the z part of the direction vector and divide it by the length of the direction vector and these are called direction cosines now if we call the first direction cosine L the second direction cosine M and the third direction cosine N then it can be proved that L squared plus M squared plus N squared is always equal to 1 okay so I'll just go through this again so if we take the direction vector uh, we can take each number in the direction vector and write it as a direction ratio so each one of those three numbers written as a ratio it's called a direction ratio the direction cosine is basically looking at the direction of each part of the direction ratio and it's the x part of the direction vector divided by the length of the direction vector the y part of the direction vector divided by its, the length of the direction vector the z part or you could a k part of the direction uh, vector divided by the length of the direction vector and then if we call each part let's take away that squared there if we call each one of those direction cosines l m and n then l squared plus m squared plus n squared is always equal to one right okay find the vector equation of a line through these points here and it's going for the points 1 2 minus 1 and 3 minus 2 2 and we're writing it in this form here r minus a uh, cross b now um, a remember is any point that it passes through so a equals a point the line passes through now that could be either one the one two minus one or the three minus two two I'm going to do um, one two minus one and then B is going to be um, any vector parallel to the line okay and I'm actually going to um, work out the second minus the first so I'm going to do 3 minus 2 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 you could do it the other way around 
So if I called um, this C and this D, I'm basically working out D minus C like that. So you can work it out the other way around or work out the jump between them. So if I work that out, I get a parallel vector of two, and then minus two minus two is minus four, and then two minus minus one, two plus one is three. So here's my answer for B. Um, so I can write it as R, remember that just stays the same, that will be generated um, or give us different points. And here we put A, so 1, 2, minus 1. So this could have also have been instead the um, 3 minus 2, 2. Let's put that in brackets. Uh, cross B. So B is going to be 2 minus 4, 3 equals zero and here we could have any vector parallel to this any vector parallel to this would also be fine that means any multiple of that would be fine okay so we got the vector equation of a line here it's been given for us in that form um, R minus A cross B equals zero. So I need to underline it because that's the zero vector. Uh, find the direction cosines of the line L, M and N. So first of all, the direction vector is B. Uh, so that's 4 minus 3, 2. And the direction cosines, well, there's going to be three of them, L, M, and N, and you take each part of the direction vector and you divide by the length of the direction vector. So they're all going to be divided by 4 squared plus minus 3 squared plus 2 squared. So that's L, M, uh, the y part of the direction vector is going to be minus 3. Again, dividing by the same length, 4 squared plus minus 3 squared plus 2 squared. And then n, that's going to be 2, the z part of the direction vector. Again, divided by the same length, 4 squared plus minus 3 squared plus 2 squared. Right, so let's work these out. So 4 over... And all going to be over the same thing. So I want the square root of 16 plus 9 plus 4. Let's do that again. 16 plus 9 plus 4. Root 29. Okay. So 4 over root 29. Minus 3 over root 29. And um, 2 over root 29. So these are our three direction cosines. So the cosines of these numbers will give us the angles. I'm not ask for the angles, just the direction cosines. Okay, part B. Show that the Cartesian equation of the line can be written in that form. So if we just pick out um, the vector for the point that it passes through, remember they're going to go here. So remember it's like uh, x minus a1 minus a2 minus a3. And here L, M and N, well that's going to be what we get from, well, well, get it into that form in a moment. Let's start by using the a equals 1, 2, minus 1, and b equals 4, minus 3, 2, and use that to write the Cartesian equation of the line. So that's going to be um, x minus a1, which is 1, 
over b1, which is 4, equals y minus a2, which is 2, over b2, which is minus 3, equals z minus minus 1, uh, which is a3 over b3, which is 2. Okay, how are we going to make this look like the, the, die, um, the values of L, M and N? Well, if you have a look, you'll see actually the numbers at the top are the same, 4, minus 3 and 2, but we've got this root 29 at the bottom. Now, if I multiply the whole thing, each part of that, by root 29, that's the same as dividing the uh, denominator by root 29. So multiplying by root 29 is the same as doing this. x minus 1 divided by 4 divided by root 29. That's the same as multiplying by root 29 equals my, y minus 2 divided by minus 3 divided by root 29 equals z plus 1 divided by 2 divided by root 29. So dividing the numerator or denominator, sorry, by root 29 is the same as um, multiplying by root 29. And here we can see we have L, M and N in the um, in the denominators as required. Okay, should now be able to do exercise 1D um, on pages 18 to 20 of the textbook. So uh, just a quick recap of what we've done. So we now have this new way of writing the equation of a line. And the equation of the line can be written as r minus a in brackets cross b equals zero or it can also be written as r cross b equals a cross b okay if we um, take the direction vector of a line direction vector and that's b isn't it and that's b1 b2 b3 then we call this the direction ratio b1 b2 b3 is called the direction ratio and then the uh, these things here so cos alpha equals b1 over the length of b and cos beta equals b2 over the length of b and cos gamma equals b3 over the length of b. As I said in the book they use x, y and z. Uh, these are called the direction cosines, the direction cosines. The first direction cosine we'll call L, the second one M and the last one N. And another result with L, M and N is that L squared plus M squared plus N squared equals one. So in other words, when you get each one of these direction cosines, if you square them and find the sum of them, they're always going to equal 1.